Greetings, and welcome to another AG2 production. My name is Chief Warrant Officer 3, Jordan Murphy. The topic of this video is creating a suspense tracker in SharePoint. The purpose of this video is to provide the viewer with the skills necessary to create a basic suspense tracker in SharePoint. The target audience of this video is the SharePoint beginner. This video was created using SharePoint 2010. In order to complete the steps in this video, you must have contribute permissions or higher on your SharePoint site. If you do not have contribute permissions, please contact your site administrator to get the correct permissions. Prior to completing the steps in this video, it is recommended that you view the other SharePoint how-tos on AGTube as I will be discussing columns and features on an already existing list. This video is part of a multi-part series on suspense tracking. This video will cover the creation and use of the suspense tracker on a SharePoint front end. Future videos will explain how to export your data to Excel for analysis and reporting, and creating custom views of your data on SharePoint to show only the content you wish to view. Upon completion of this video, the viewer should have a higher level of confidence in creating a basic suspense tracker in SharePoint. It is not intended to be all-inclusive of the options available when creating a suspense tracker. Let's begin. First, navigate to your SharePoint site. Click on Lists or All Site Content on your SharePoint site. Click on Create. Scroll down until you see Tasks. Choose Task List and type the name of your list. My Suspense Tracker. Then click on Create. Now I'm going to be working from an already existing list, so after I complete this step, I'm going to go to my own suspense tracker that's already created and populated. So for you, when your new list loads, what you want to do is come up here to List Tools, click on List, then List Settings. When the screen loads, click on Versioning Settings and choose Yes in the item version history for a creative version each time you edit an item in this list. Versioning allows you to go back and track the history of changes and see who made changes to your items. It is very useful in auditing. Once you make this change, click on OK. Now we're going to create all of our columns. As I'm working from an existing list, I'm going to briefly cover the columns and their types. As you view the screen, you can take note of the column names and types. You'll notice there are several choice column types. These are the columns you need to create for each of your subordinate business and operational units. And you'll need to create a column for each of these. All of them have to have the same values in the selection list properties. So I'm going to go in, you can see I have business unit 1, 2, and 3, and the operating units of human resources, operations, logistics, and finance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on business unit 1. When this screen loads, you'll see that it's a choice with a menu down here of the different choices you can have. This is going to be a drop-down menu. We've created those in the past. So you can see the different choices on each line here. In progress, not started, NA, past due, completed, and so on. So for each business and operating unit you create, it must have the exact same values in here. Now you can choose whatever works for your organization. These are the choices I have on my suspense tracker. Just go ahead and click on OK after you've typed in your list. You can see all of these one, two, three, seven different business and operational units have the they're all choice fields and they have the exact same data for the drop down. Also we'll come back up here to priority. This is also a choice with high, normal, and low. Again, you can change these to meet the needs of your organization. You want it as a drop-down menu. And click on Cancel since it's already created. Now in here, order number uh, for the military organizations, order number would be a, a, an operations order or a fragmentary order created that tasks your subordinate units, uh, business and operating units, battalions, companies, so on with the, the Frago or operations order number, you can put that in here. Task name, this is just a single line of text. This is gonna be a required field that gives what the, the information that pertains to the task that's assigned to each operational unit within your operations order. 
description. This is a multi-line of text field. This allows you to put in all the details about the task that came from the operations order. The other one on here, assigned to. So click on here, or create an assigned to column, and that's going to be uh, the person, the type of information in the column is a person or group. So when you're creating that column, you're going to choose person or group. You want to ensure that allow multiple sel selections is yes. This will allow you to task multiple groups or individuals. Now, if you remember from the creating groups and permissions, video that explains exactly how to create groups and assign members to a group. We're not going to cover that here. I'm going to go on and click cancel. You'll see these are all of the different fields that we created. Description, start date, due date. Again, you can change these to meet the needs of your organization. Created by and modified by, these are SharePoint default columns created every time you create a list. Point of contact I have on here is a multiple line of text field. This just details about the point of contact for whatever specific task you assign to your subordinate organizations. I have this as plain text. This is where you could put in the, the name, phone number, email address of the person who your subordinates need to contact if they have questions on the task. So again, I'll give you some time to look over what the different fields on here are. You can pause the screen at this time to look over them. And also in the comments of this video, I'm going to post details about each of the column names and some of the choices that go in there. So you can see all the different column names on here again. Replace business unit one, two, three, and the different human resource operations. Replace those with what works for your organization. Just remember in the choice for the selections in the choice field, you need to have those as identical across all of them. That comes into play when we do the Excel analysis and export of the data. So we're going to go ahead here now. We're going to click on the name of the suspense list from the breadcrumb trail. And this is going to bring us back to the main screen. As you can see, I already have a bunch of data on my screen here from previous suspenses that I imported for this list. Now, in order to create a new item, you have two options. You either, either can click on li under list tools, you can click on list tools and items, new item, or you can scroll all the way to the bottom, click add new item. Now, as you add more items to your tracker, you'll find that it's probably easier to click under list tools, items, new item to create a new item. So as this loads, I'm going to create a new item order number. We're going to say is 16-010. Task name is update operations plan. We're going to assign that to. I'm going to come in here and search, and all of my groups I have listed is 108SB underscore. I'm going to click on search load those up and I just want to assign that to my human resources group click on add then OK details update your portion of the operations plan start date is today that's a default of today the due date we're gonna say is January 22nd 2016 now if you're in the current year and both dates are going to be in the current year, you can actually leave off the year. So if I wanted this to be December 29th of 2015, I could just type in 1229. The system's going to recognize that as being in the current year. But I want to do this for January 22nd, 2016. And then here's where you're going to assign it to each of your business and operating units and if it's applicable. So since this is only for the human resource group, what I'm going to do down here is change this to NA for my other business units. Leave it, put it to not started or in progress for the human resources group. Leave these other two as NA, change finance to NA. And I'll change point of contact to the operations officer. I'm going to click on save. And you'll see that this loaded right here at the top and all the details about that. I'll scroll over and you can see that it's only assigned to the human resources group 
and it's an NA for all of the other groups. I'm going to go back real quick to the list settings and, and let the viewers take a quick look at the different list uh, columns on here. For just a quick moment, again, you can pause it, take note of it, and again, in the comments, I'm going to put the, the list and the type of each column on here and what, what values are in here as a sample for you to copy off of. And that's it. Once you've created these columns, you're able to input a new suspense. Again, items, new item. And you'll add your information in here. Click on save and that will add it to your suspense tracker. That's it. You've just created a suspense tracker and created an item in the tracker. Now, a special thanks goes out to Major Joseph Harris of the Illinois Army National Guard who created the initial shell for this tracker and command... Captain Samantha Natman of the 108th Air Defense Artillery Brigade, who also provided additional input for fields and information on this tracker. Thank you for tuning in to AGTube.